Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I'm back today with another update on my Lula May. So this is a manufactured house as I showed you guys from delivery to installation to decorating. And we have been here for about two months now. So after two months when the house has been in place on its foundation and actually settled, they send the manufacturer send someone out to walk the house and do any repairs that may need to be done. So since these houses do move, I mean, you literally watched it being brought in on a truck. The how um, words are hard. The walls can shift a little bit. Things can get damaged a little bit. Now they do a pretty good job of keeping everything safe. You know, the doors aren't hung when they move it. They're laying flat. Chandeliers aren't necessarily hung. Things are, precautions are taken, but it's a drywall house, drywall shifts. So after they put everything in place, they send a team out and they spent about a week or two going around, sheetrocking, fixing everything that needed to be fixed immediately. And then they leave it sit for two months and let things settle. And as the house settles into its foundation, new things happen. So new cracks appear, sometimes things with the moldings need fixed. I'm going to show you, but like up here on the cabinets, all of that caulking is done. And some of that is the house actually settling and creating distance and therefore cracks and walls and caulk especially. And some of it is that these houses are built, they're manufactured at a warehouse and things need touched up because not everything's done 100% perfect every single time, even though they're, they're made pretty well. <laughs> they're just not made 100% perfectly. So I'm going to show you everything that is on my list, everything that I've sent in, and then I'm going to go around and show you in as much detail as I can the actual things in real time. And then after the manufacturer comes out and fixes these things, I will show you the exact places, how they fixed them, and what they look like, what you can expect with those changes. So I have my phone here, handy dandy phone. It is a long list because I'm a bit of a detail oriented person. And I will put the list up here on the screen so that you guys can see it. But we're gonna start in the kitchen since we are in the kitchen. And in the kitchen, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items on my list. Now, technically that's seven because I swear I put caulk molding on every single room in the house. I will show you guys, um, but most of the molding to me doesn't look like it was ever caulked, especially where the seams are between the pieces. Um, you can straight up see the seams, but I do know Arnold, hey Arnold, um, the trim guy, who came out and worked on the house for about two, two weeks. I mean, I personally watched him caught several of these moldings that still look like they've shifted and need recaught. So part of it is just settling and, um, and it should be fixed with a nice new coat, but I'm going to go ahead and just say there's seven items on the list because we're going to recock all of this. It needs, it needs some help. So the other items are, like I said, the upper cabinets are pulling away from the wall. The flat trim over here between the microwave and the butler's pantry needs to be caulked. There is a large drawer behind me to the right of the stove where the pole is, I mean, it's probably the most messed up thing in the house. It is completely busted. It just needs a new track and it'll be fine, but it is obviously not okay. The glue underneath the counters, when they put the counters together, is very globby and it needs to be sanded off. Globby is a word. <laughs> There's a drawer front on this side of the island that is crooked. It needs to just be straightened. There's a crack in the tray ceiling and there is stuffing coming out of this can light. So let's go ahead. I'm going to try and be as steady with the camera as possible, but I'm going to just walk you through all of those things real quick so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so here's the trim and you can see not only does the actual bottom and top 
but where all of the trim pieces come together, there are seams that need to be caulked. So that is what I'm talking about in each and every room that needs to be redone. Here is where the cabinets are definitely pulling away from the wall. Now I had them double check this when they came the first time because I have a lot of china and they definitely looked like they were pulling away from the wall to begin with. But it has gotten 8 million percent worse. So that needs to be fixed. All right, here is in between the microwave and the butler's pantry. And this piece of trim right there just needs to be caught to the wall. Also, I don't know what to do with this tray. I made it on my channel. If you guys watch any of my resin videos, it's like my absolute most popular video of all time. And everywhere I try to display it, it just looks not good. So, I mean, I use it, but I need a pretty place to display it. If you think of one, let me know. And then the drawer. So this is what I'm talking about when I say it's the most obvious thing that needs fixed because unless you're crazy, you can tell that's not right. But all that's wrong is there's a track in here holding the drawer in place and on the left side, it is cracked, busted. So a new track and it should be just fine. But in the meantime, I've just taken everything out of it and they will come and fix it. All right, so next, we have this glue under the counters so you can see all of this. This is the gloops. It's just glue that needs to be sanded off all the way around the room. And then the counters will look pretty again. Okay, so here is the crooked drawer front. I don't know if you can tell I'm trying to hold the camera straight, but here is a straight drawer front. Here is the crooked one. So it just needs to be bloop, popped up and it will be much better. All right, so here is the crack in the tray ceiling. It's just on the very corner here, just straight down. And you'll notice that I have a purple heart on the wall. And that is because Arnold, the dream guy, had suggested I mark all of these things as much as possible with a sticky note. So there you go. And then another quick fix, one that I could probably do, but I'm not going to, is this can light that has stuffing coming out of it. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And that is everything in the kitchen. All right, so we are in the laundry room. Say hi, Cinnamon. This is the dog's domain. As you can tell, they have a good time in here. And here are the fixes. So, most obvious one are these cracks up here in the corner. Doors are definitely the worst place um, that shift because there's just not very much structure there. These parts around the door also need caulked as well as dun, 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 all of this. All of that definitely needs caulked. Then around the door here, you can see there are all of these screw holes. They gave us little pegs to put in those so that they look finished and they look great on the front doors, but they did not give us enough for all three doors. So we just need more of those. And then you will see the doggy door. I do have a tutorial coming soon on how to install that. And it does let in water. Obviously that is the risk you take when you have a dog door. But even before we put the dog door in, this door, I don't believe is flush or the threshold isn't flush because this door by itself lets in water all along here. So the threshold needs to be fixed just a little bit. And then I don't know if you can tell, but there are some kind of drips on this wall that have been here. I don't know what they're from. 
I have magic erasered them. They do not come off. So that needs to be repainted. And then maybe they'll be gone. And that is it. You will be able to see in the butler's pantry here that not much needs done. There's not even any cracks on the wall. I believe the only thing I have marked in here is to caulk the trim. Well, let's move on to the dining room. All right, so the list in the dining room is not as long. The main things in here are the chandelier, which is at living room height, since they actually had this chandelier supposed to be in the living room, and I moved it to the dining room, I then put a fan in the living room, which is great, but it's still at living room height so that you can walk under it. And as you can see, it's just too tall. It needs to be dropped about here maybe, and then it will be much better. There are also some cracks on this wall right up here and up here above this beam. So those are the main two cracks. There's also a light switch right over here when you come in the back door that does nothing. We don't know where it goes. We don't know what it does. We're not sure what you're supposed to do with it. So we just want to know where that goes, what it does, what it leads to. I think that's it, but let's check the list. Dining room, trim needs cocked, check. Chandelier is at living room height, check. Light switch by the door does nothing. The crack in the dining room above the window and above the post. Perfect. Let's go into the living room. All right, so most of the changes in this room are in the ceiling. Let's see. There is paint on this beam right up here and right on the corner. I will show you both of those. That just needs to be fixed. There's also a large gap between the beam and the wall. I'm not sure if they can fill that in with caulk or if they need to cut a little piece of beam, but that's something that they'll have to sort out. There is also right up here to the side of this galvanized column, a little piece of ceiling. It just has no texture, has no paint. We're not sure. I'm guessing when they mudded over it, they just forgot to repaint and texturize it. Guys, we're filming a video. They think it's playtime. And then right here, there is a spot right next to the beam where you can tell they patched the beam, they patched the ceiling. And again, they just forgot to paint and texturize it. You can still see the shoot rock mud. These are all pretty easy fixes. They just need to be done. Let's show you close-ups. I swear these dogs, they think they're getting their close-ups. All right, here is to the left of the galvanized beam. And you can see it is just a little spot that needs to be retextured and repainted. So that should be pretty easy. And then we move over to the beam. So the largest spot right there and down here, you can see just needs to be retextured, repainted in that sheetrock mud will disappear but as of right now at least to me it's very obvious the last spot is right down here over this beam there's this large crack there is paint on the beam and then there's the gap so all of that needs to be fixed And I promise I am going to buy a stabilizer so that you guys don't have as much shake in these videos. You playing? They think this is just the best thing ever. Let's go down the hall to the bedrooms. All right, so the hallway, as you can see with the little hearts, has a crack in almost every single door. Fortunately or unfortunately, the light is out in the hallway, so I can't turn it on for you all. But seeing as that makes it super yellow, I'm not sure that would help. 
The bedrooms by themselves, say hi, Biddy, aren't too bad, but let me get my messy craft room, y'all. They do have lots of cocks. So this specific piece of trim, I know I watched Arnold personally cock and fix. And as you can see, there's still huge gaps in the bottom to the wall. You'll also notice that there's not a smoke detector up here. And that is because I've taken it down and I will explain why in a minute. So let's go across the hall to the bathroom, or as I call it, the resin drain room. Cause this is where I hide my resin pieces to dry. Also where I hide my extra chair. There are a few things in here, like this staple coming through this piece of trim that need to be fixed. And you'll notice there's just huge gaps in all of the trim that need to be sorted out. There's another example of why the clock needs to be fixed around the molding. All the seams on the corners are just huge gaps. Not good. But luckily, a little cock goes a long way. Let's go to the bedroom. Lead the way, Shug. No? Okay. All right, let me grab the list and turn off those lamps. Much better. Now y'all might not go blind. Okay, so the main problem in here is that the barn doors are not 100% straight. And part of that is just because this is a manufactured house and therefore the foundation is not gonna be 100% the same with every house. But when you take this little tree away, they just all roll to the side. So unfortunately they need to be rehung so that they do not do that and they are usable because right now I can't close them. Well, I can close them, but it's not helpful. All right, we also need a little bit of mud up here by the beam. Just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. There is paint drips down the back of this half wall. And as you can see, it needs cocked on the side here. Dun, dun, dun. Get a sneak peek behind the curtain. Paint drips everywhere. Probably the most frustrating part in here, hi guys, is that the grout they seem to have used for the shower, this blackish grout in the corner here, I don't know if it's just not great grout or what, but it doesn't seem to be water soluble because it keeps coming off in clumps all the way around and going down the drain. So that needs to be fixed because I imagine we need grout. And the last, certainly not least thing, is there appears to be a water temperature gauge on the tub. It gets lukewarm at best. It does not ever get warm. It definitely does not get hot. And after reading reviews from other Lulamay owners, it is definitely a temperature gauge that they've put on the back of the tub. So hopefully they will be able to fix that. But if not, we will figure it out. I believe it is a safety precaution because they don't want you to be in the tub with scalding hot water coming and then like burn your leg. But there are no children here. It is just me. I am a grown-up adult and I can take a bath without scalding my legs. All right, the girls wanted to be in the last part of the video. So the last bit of the cosmetics list are all things outside. 
The front door sticks like crazy. I don't think it's hung quite straight. Um, Arnold did try to fix it once when he was here and it did get fixed for probably a week or two. And now it still sticks again. Now this house does have two entrances. So, you know, you can just come in the other door. But let's be honest, I should be able to come in whichever door I like, including my living room door. So that needs to be addressed. There's also no electric outlet on the front porch. There is one on the back porch, but not on the front. There's also not really a back porch, just the back steps that I had custom built. Um, but you can access the electric outlet from those steps. However, especially since I do all of my resin outside on the front porch, that electric outlet out there is really important to me. If you don't do crazy resin projects on your porch, it's still really nice for Christmas lights or other outdoor decorations. Or leaf blowers. You never know. So those are the main things outside. There's also one piece of skirting over by the little grill spot. Hey, chill. We're taking a video. And that skirting is just non-existent. They completely forgot to do one little piece. Not of like the up and down skirting, but the top skirting that covers the up and down skirting. And then we will get to the smoke detectors. So I am not sure exactly what's going on with them. But about a week or two after I actually officially moved into the house, this smoke detector in the living room, there are one, two, three, four smoke detectors in the house, one in the central living area, and then one in each of the bedrooms. The one in this room, the living room, started going off. First it was like once every couple days. And then it was once every other day. And then it was once a day. And then it was once an hour. And then it was once every five seconds. You get the idea. Over the course of maybe two weeks, it just went from a little bit to like a lot of it. So I went to the store and I bought a new battery and I changed it out. Brand new battery straight out of the package. And that seemed to fix it for about a day, maybe a day and a half. And then it was right back to screaming at me every five seconds. As you can imagine, it was quite frustrating. So I took it down and I thought maybe it's just this one is defective. So I went on Amazon and I bought a brand new smoke detector. Even though this house is less than two months old and it should be brand new. I bought a same, same model, brand new smoke detector took the old one down, I installed the new one, and I thought we were good to go, right, Cinnamon? She remembers the screaming, it was not fun. The smoke detector was screaming, Mommy was screaming, it was not fun for her. So that probably fixed the problem for about a couple weeks. And then I thought I was hallucinating. The three and the back bedroom started doing the same thing. Now. I don't mind having to replace a smoke detector, but these smoke detectors should be brand new. They should not be need replaced. And they're not exactly, like they're not expensive, but they're not super cheap to replace either. I believe the one that I bought was 40 or $50. So in order to replace all four, that's almost $200 and brand new smoke detectors that should be brand new. So I have taken those three down I did, of course, try to replace them with fresh new batteries right out of the package from the store first. That didn't seem to do anything. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a problem with the wiring. I'm not sure if it's a problem with the smoke detectors. The smoke detectors themselves, the models say that they're brand new. Um, but obviously, this brand new one works and the other one did not. So. Something is, is fishy with that, but I don't have the knowledge to know what yet. Um, hopefully they will be able to get to the bottom of it. Obviously, I'm willing to replace them if I need to. Smoke detectors are a safety feature. They are not pretty cosmetics, so I do need them. And I definitely have this one installed and it works because it screamed at me when I made bacon the other night and it does not scream at me the rest of the time but I do need all four of them working it would make me feel a lot better. So hopefully they will be able to fix that ASAP, but I know a lot of y'all are interested in this house and I'm giving you total transparency 
on what it's been like for me. So here is my list, as they call it, the cosmetics Ooh. list of everything that needs fixed after living here for two months, after everything's settled. Guys, we're filming. Also, my dogs don't understand this. And I will be back after they've come and changed everything, after they fixed everything. I will give you guys a total update of what it looks like and hopefully that the smoke detectors are fixed because if not I guess we need to call an electrician who fixes smoke detectors. Call dad, ask him about smoke detectors and then we'll get to the bottom of it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you didn't like this video and you think my house is cluttered then go watch a different video because I love my house and I'm happy living here and luckily I'm the only one who has to, so have a good one. Bye.